Welcome to a Legendarium special about the Secret Palace of Emperor Caligula. In this installment, we will talk about the lost legendary secret pleasure garden of Emperor Caligula. The fourth of the Twelve Caesars, Caligula, officially named Gaius Julius Caesar Germanicus, was a capricious, combustible, first-century populist. History remembers him as the empire's most debauched ruler. As reported by Suetonius, he never forgot a slight, slept only a few hours a night, and married several times, lastly to a woman named Melonia. He endeared himself to the Roman people by humiliating those who called themselves their betters. He forced senators to dress as slaves and to chase after his chariot in the streets. Meanwhile, he would climb up onto the rooftops with pots filled with gold coins, and he flung them into the streets, where he smiled benevolently as Roman citizens fought over the gold coins, sometimes to the death. During the four years that Caligula occupied the Roman throne, his favorite hideaway became an imperial pleasure garden called the Horti Lamiani. The vast residential compound spread over three and a half acres on the Esquiline Hill, one of the seven hills where Rome's founders originally built the city, supposedly. It is in the area around the current Piazza Vittorio Emmanuel II. Originally, a rich senator named Lucius Aelius Lamia commissioned the house which became known as the Horti Lamiani. To curry favor with the imperial family, he left the estate to Emperor Tiberius, who ruled before Caligula. After Caligula took the throne in 37 AD, supposedly after Praetorian prefect Macro smothered Emperor Tiberius to death with a pillow in his sleep, he found the house a little bit too staid and traditional for his taste. There, on the edge of the city, Caligula's builders laid out villas, shrines, and banquet halls in carefully constructed landscapes. The Hortai Lamiani includes an early version of a wildlife park, orchards, fountains, terraces, and a bathhouse adorned with precious colored marble taken from across Rome's Mediterranean empire. It also included exotic animals, some of which Caligula used in the Colosseum. Caligula also curried favor with the people by staging games as lavish and over-the-top as his lifestyle. In the Colosseum, if he found a gladiator match went on too long for his taste, Caligula ordered the competitors to simply cut each other's throats so the crowd could see some blood. When a fighter appeared to have exhausted himself, Caligula ordered an Armenian dwarf dressed in gold armor to murder the disgraced fighter. After chopping the gladiator to pieces, the the dwarf urinated or defecated on his remains. Finally, a bald, black-clad man jabbed the dead fighter's genitals with a red-hot poker, and if the man showed no reaction, he struck them in a head with a silver hammer. Meanwhile, back in the palace, Caligula used it to host formal events for troops of actors and gladiators, which many senators considered beneath the dignity of one who wore the imperial purple. Not that Caligula cared much for dignity or wisdom. Apparently convinced of his divinity, Caligula began betting the wives of his own Praetorian guards and then boasted of his exploits to their faces. When Caligula's own guards unsurprisingly murdered him in his palace on the Palatine Hill in 41 AD, the regicides carried his bloodied corpse to the Horti Lamiani. There they cremated and hastily buried him. The new emperor, Claudius, ordered Caligula's ashes moved to the mausoleum of Augustus on the Campus Martius, north of the Capitoline Hill. According to Suetonius, the garden remained haunted by Caligula's ghost. The house and garden complex survived until the Severan dynasty, which ruled Rome from AD 193 to 235. 
By the 4th century, the gardens fell into disuse, and workmen began breaking up the statuary in the abandoned pavilions to create the foundations for spas. The statues would not be rediscovered until 1874 by Rodolfo Lanciani, who realized he found bits and pieces of Caligula's legendary palace. Yet most historians still believed that the Hortai Lamiani itself remained lost to history. However, around the year 2005, construction workers laboring on an office building happened across the remains of alabaster floors. Years of ex excavation followed until the spring of 2021, when Italy's Ministry of Tourism opened the Nymphaeum Museum of Piazza Vittorio, an underground gallery that showcases a section of the Imperial Garden unearthed during the earlier excavations. The dig, carried out beneath a 19th century apartment complex, produced gems, coins, ceramics, jewelry, pottery, and the seeds of plants like citron, apricot, and acacia imported from Asia for the pleasure of a Roman emperor. They also found the bones of peacocks, deer, lions, bears, and ostriches, who ran wild and free around the imperial grounds. A nearby museum showcases imperial grandeur like a marble staircase, capitals of colored marble and limestone, and an imperial guard's bronze brooch inset with gold and mother of pearl. And so a house that was built for the selfish pleasures of one man has become a center of education for all people. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.